Sound design. Yeah. So is this the best subwoofer array for large concerts? I don't know, I'll let you be the judge of that, but that's what we're gonna get into in today's video. So I recently interviewed Adam Hill, and just doing some research for that interview, I discovered that he has a bunch of papers on the AES website about subwoofers and subwoofer arrays. And one of those is this guy, 7971, subwoofer positioning, orientation, and calibration for large scale sound reinforcements. And in it, um, they discuss many of the challenges related to ground-based subwoofer systems to help have nice even coverage in the audience and less coverage on the stage. So rejection on the stage, summation in front. So what I did in this article is try to recreate the results and understand them a little bit better. So the first thing I did over here in MapXT is just try to set up the designed to be like there. So I've got a stage here. Imagine that this line is like a barricade and I've got audience over here. So in the article, they go through a bunch of important features about gradient arrays um, and coverage patterns, but we are going to skip down to this section called optimal subwoofer setup. Uh, so they describe where the stage is and then the first thing they suggest is four single cardioid subwoofers across the front of the stage, four meter spacing. So let's do that. Map XT, uh, I've already, I already have those set up, but let me show you how I built those. So if you're still using a 2D environment because you haven't started using Map 3D yet, then uh, this is the way you can do that. You just insert a subwoofer and then put another one right on top. So if I grab one of these, you'll see that they're just right on top of each other. And then the way that you optimize an inverting gradient stack is the same way you optimize an inline gradient subwoofer. Uh, which is in the rear. So I have a microphone here and I'm going to solo the forward facing element first. Okay, so here's a measurement of my forward facing sub at the rear and now I need to select the rear sub and I might have to just move this forward sub out of the way for a second. Okay, so now I can select the rear sub and you can see that we have matched level and we are phase aligned, but polarity inverted. And to prove that to you, I can take out the polarity inversion and we can see that now they're level matched and phase matched. Why did I level match them? Well, because I'm trying to create um, really great rejection at the rear. So I'm optimizing for rejection at the rear, really close. Normally with an array like this, you could just leave the gain alone and know that you know at distance, they would be level matched. But here I'm trying to create a specific effect, which is uh, cancellation really close at the rear there. Okay, so level and phase matched, and now I'll put the polarity inversion back in. Okay, looks good. And now I need to put this back together. And now if I select this guy and zoom out, we should see a nice gradient array. Great. So there's one of them by themselves. And so now all I did was copy and paste these three times so that we have four across the front. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so here we are at 63 hertz. And uh, let me show you a couple of other frequencies. Let's look at 40. And let's look at 100. And I want to point something out to you at 100. Um, notice how there's quite a bit more 100 on the stage, okay? Um, because I'll be showing that to you again later. Okay, so let's go back to 63 and let's continue on. So the next thing that the authors point out in the paper is that this is not great yet. Um, the initial setup gives very limited coverage across the audience area, although these are no-nos. Okay, so they say that the, the coverage is not great here, but you can easily fix that by extending the line, make this line longer, add more subwoofers. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip a step here. So we're gonna add more subwoofers, and this time it'll be a three element um, gradient array because, and I'm gonna skip a step because the next step is to then angle those outside subwoofers 45 degrees. So here I have those. So exact same array, I just added one more sub on top. And this time when I optimized it, um, I didn't need to turn down the rear sub. 
Instead, I needed to turn down the top sub because now I have two forward facing subs and one rear facing sub. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so there's our three element inverted gradient stack. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the reason that they suggest making this one taller is that now it won't block sight lines. So now it's not in front of the stage, so you can add more power here. Okay, so now we have a longer line and even more subs on the end. So let's look at that. Okay, um, this is the result at 63 hertz. Let's take a look at 40 hertz. And let's take a look at 100 hertz. And you can see that it does have the result they wanted, which is uh, coverage is now not just this pointy spaceship, but has extended across the sides here better. Is it the best subwoofer array? Well, let's look at the results um, across more than just one frequency. So to save us some time, let's just look at these images I made. So I compared the first row, front of house, downstage center, and downstage right. And let me show you where those microphones were. So I'm calling this front of house, first row, downstage center, downstage right. And you can see that the results are not super impressive. We have really nice rejection here. Um, in the low end of this subwoofer's operating range, but then up here around 100 hertz, we really only have like 6.75 dB of rejection. And now you remember we were looking at 100 hertz, and you can now see why I was pointing that out to you, is that, you know, these shorter wavelengths, um, we've got this overlap happening, and it's just going all over the stage here in that higher frequency. So can this be improved? I think you could probably come up with some better ideas. I played around with it a little bit. The only thing that I tried was um, adding an extra sub. They suggest a maximum spacing, but not really a minimum one. So I, I, tried, it, I tried adding an extra sub, so having um, five subs across the middle instead of four. And I also tried adding a high pass filter to see if I could reduce some of that 100 Hertz. Um, and it didn't really get better, okay? Similar results, about the same. I think really at this point, the best thing I could do is take this whole array and just move it forward a meter. And it really should be forward a meter anyway because I'm too close to the stage. Now this doesn't really matter in the Map XT prediction environment because these architectural visual aids, these lines here, don't really do anything to the prediction. They're just there to help our eyeballs. Um, but really, moving this this way would help get some of that sound off the stage, but moving the entire array this way uh, would help get some more of that sound off of the stage. Now, of course, it's gonna get more of the sound onto the front row here, and so it doesn't really change the front to back ratio. Um, but this is, the, this is really the main thing I can think of right now to improve this. So I'd love to know what um, improvements you would suggest. So if you head over to the article and scroll to the bottom, you'll see that you can download my map file here if you wanna play with it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, in a future video, I'm gonna go deeper into this article because they, talk, they start talking about, hey, what if you had to do 270 degrees of coverage? So instead of just this area in the front here, what if you also had to cover over here all the way to the sides? They get into another interesting subwoofer array suggestion here. Um, I didn't want to make this video even longer, but I'd like to talk about that one next time because it's pretty cool. Sound design. Yeah.